Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon, a magnetic service. We've spoken to you so many times about the beauty of who you are. And we've said to those who sit in front of me in person, to those listening later, that inside of you, at a level that is multidimensional, which you cannot even fathom, is the actual creator of all things. The biology you carry, that you call yourself, is temporary. This day my partner brought you a concept on purpose that would help you to understand more about the reality of the fact that reincarnation is the way of it. The word is not necessarily the word we would use. We would say life expression. When your soul would come back and inhabit that which is another human being's body that you continue with as your soul. And so there is something here to look at. It's beautiful. What did you think when you saw the proof that was given today that the potential of coming again is real? So now it's time to start connecting the dots because there is a responsibility that starts to come with the elegance of your maturing soul. I'm going to call this channel Soul Stewardship. You've got to start understanding and cognizing the truth of the fact that you're ancient. Question. For you to use spiritual logic. If you come back again, and you're a human again, is it an accident? The answer you would give is it's obviously not an accident. It's the way things work. Next question. If it's the way things work, there has to be a working plan. Would you agree? If there is a working plan, then you have to ask who is working the plan? Where did it come from? Is it this way by accident? No, it's this way because it's planned. If there is a plan, what kind of a plan is it? And the answer is a benevolent one. One that knows who you are. The thing that we have approached before that is so difficult for you. A question was asked this very day that my partner could not answer. And so I will. What is the distance of time from the death of the human being that has your soul to the time when you will come back and inhabit yet another body? with the same soul. What's the distance of time in reincarnation? And this is where it gets good. Dear ones, there's no rule that says you have to stay away. There's no rule that says you have to come back at a certain time, a certain place. There are no parameters that are spiritual that says there's got to be a rest period. That's funny. <laughs> Instead, you wait for your karmic group to have the right time and the right place so you'll be back in a benevolent way and do what you came to do. And sometimes that means that if you left too soon, the group has to grow up and you'll come back later. Sometimes those in the group have to pass away and reincarnate so you can reincarnate with them. Your time frame, therefore, is dependent upon what happens on the planet not on rules. 
Now, I want you to analyze this for a moment, because this is a benevolent plan. It is not one that adheres to certain kind of spiritual doctrine that says this must be and this must be. It is one that celebrates the souls returning to the planet. Now this is all starting to shift. It's all starting to change. The shift that we have talked about that my partner teaches is real. I am here talking to you in this way in this channeling way because of the shift there would be no cryon if you didn't make it and yet I came in 26 years ago before the potential and the reason for this is we could see the wild cards in progress those who will notice that I showed up just about the time that the largest wild card occurred and that is the fall of the Soviet Union. That really took the energy out of World War III. There are still those, even after it didn't happen, that are trying to rekindle the idea of another war. So invested in an old energy that for eons ramped itself up to go to a certain ignite point and it's something that they say has to happen and yet it didn't dear ones the shift is real and with the shift comes many things that my partner has discussed but not this one soul stewardship for the first time dear ones you start to cognize, to understand the system. I would like to explain something to you. An old system of unawareness has you reborn into the planet to start over. The only things that you bring in akashically are slight remembrances that will trigger certain actions or make you fear or perhaps make you successful. So they are energetic in the fact that you remember that which you did. And it either helps or hinders, but it's a lesson. In that old energy, you literally will start again, make all the mistakes again, until you come to the end of your life. And if you're metaphysical, you'll say what you're saying today. This is my last time, you will say. And of course it won't be. But you're tired because you had to go through it yet again. Dear ones, the shift has changed it all. The very paradigm of soul return is going to carry different attributes. Don't be shocked when I tell you that these attributes are going to be greater awareness, more benevolence, a more mature and elegant countenance. Listen to this. We've said this before, but it's time you really understood it. Karma is no longer needed. It worked in the past, but it is a blind energy of unfinished business. It's not elegant. It simply pushes and pulls. It is responsible for so many things that you see, perhaps you didn't even understand. Why would you have families of generations of firemen, of policemen? Because they have done it, they've come in again. Their karma is to continue it. They know it so well that they fit into the groove. Their parents did it. They'll do it. Their sons will do it. This is karma. Other kinds of karma is blind energy that will push and pull unfinished business where you'll go someplace and do something to accomplish a goal. A goal that seems to be something you must do. You're driven and nobody can figure out why. Or to make things right. Or to do something that is, is something you tried and failed in a past life and here you come to do it again and make it work. That's karma. And we told you, you don't need it. 
26 years ago, the first communication, we said, this is an old energy system, and you no longer need it. We said, instead, there's going to be a more elegant system of remembrance. Instead of a blind system of energy, there's going to be a wonderful, elegant system of remembrance. Let me tell you about what happens to every old soul that is listening to this and in this room. All of you. My partner is included. All of you. There come a time when you will leave this planet appropriately. And when you do, the time of return will completely be dependent on those things around you and those that you have chosen to be with the next time. And when you arrive, dear ones, literally, at the birth canal, the first breath, there is going to be a feeling in every cell that says, I'm back. And when you are old enough to cognize yourself, to see who you are and start realizing what is at hand, you're going to start remembering things from the past, not things that are chapter and verse, but wisdom. Dear ones, when you grow up, if you burn your hand as a child, you will never go to that stove again. All through your life, to your dying day, you learn the lesson. And it goes right into the neural pathways and etches a pattern that says, danger, I'm not going to do this. In an older system, before the shift, when you were reborn, you had to do it again. And you put your hand on the stove again. Now you don't. You come in with the knowledge of what works and what does not work. Let me be clear. I'll say it again. The mistakes you made this time around, you will not make the next time. There will be an intuitive, innate sense of how to make things work and where to go. Because in this new energy, you awaken to a soul inside your body which is far more alert, knows its back, and even though you cannot verbalize that, you have the sense of what is correct and not correct. And it's everywhere. It is in all parts of your life. It is in relationships. It is in business. And you'll feel an appropriateness or a non-appropriateness. You will be joined by other old souls slowly who feel the same thing. There'll come time when a population starts to grow in this manner because of the shift. They may not be spiritual. It doesn't matter. Because they are starting to awaken and remember what works and what doesn't. And that is why I will tell you again that after this shift, the generations to come will not create war. Because they know what doesn't work. Up to this point, every time you came in, you started over. History repeated itself because the generations didn't learn anything. Not really. You're never old enough. You die too soon. If you had lasted 200 years, you'd have known better. You would have seen it. You would have remembered it. But you don't. And therefore, one generation comes in without the knowledge of the wisdom of the last and repeats that which you did before. That is all stopping now. Old souls who return are going to start feeling a responsibility for stewarding their soul. Now here's where it gets good. I told you that in the cave of creation, you pick up the information that you had before that was Akashic and then you come in again and you continue. What I didn't tell you was this, that all the things you do on this planet have a cumulative effect on the planet. Every lifetime you'll have from now on because of this new responsibility will go back into the cave of creation when you leave and be picked up when you come back and all of it affects the crystalline grid. 
If you are wise enough to start stewarding that which is your higher self, your soul, you'll start understanding that what you do stays, goes into the planet, becomes part of all things. An individual who stewards their soul now and later, this will be the intuitive part of the new human. The new human will recognize there is a plan of return. Will recognize that a return means you pick it up and you go from there. Compassion has always been the key. A more elegant kind of living is one where you start etching new patterns not only for your lives to come but thought for your children for they start to pick up the patterns that you show you know this this gets right down to how you live and we say it again to all of you right now how do you feel about others around you in this society common things how do you feel? In a very linear way, you go to a very high quality restaurant, you dress up. You know that it's going to probably be costly, but you're ready for it because you're there. And in comes a server. I want to ask you, who are they to you? When you look at them, first glance, old soul, Oh, elevated one, who are they? There'll be some who will say, well, the scenario today is I am important and they are serving me. And so I will treat them accordingly. They're the servers, I'm the servee. This is the energy you were taught. This is the energy that prevails in a linear fashion. This is what is expected, even by the one who is serving. But an elegant old soul who knows how things work and is stewarding the soul emotion, that which gets etched into the crystal, into the planet, will see that server just like them. And the server has the peace of God which is just as beautiful as yours. And there is no separation, even for the elegance of the dinner or the cost of it, the server then becomes part of the family. You can even imagine the server sitting down at the table and enjoying the meal with you. This is a minor, minor example of what we're speaking of. How you see others forgetting the scenario completely of status, of gender, of age, where you can look at every single human and see that they're stewarding their soul too. And together you see the commonality of the love of God in each. I'll tell you something you think will be funny, but if you do this, your meal will taste better. <laughs> this is the way of it. It is a new paradigm for humanity that is going to start to occur naturally especially to the old souls who return and remember what doesn't work and what does. And the key has always been, can you see God in others, no matter what they're doing with you? It goes in reverse. How many times have you had somebody in authority over you who was an absolute fool? And you can say, that's normal. What if it is normal? Can you see the God in them? Can you bless them in their foolishness? Can you smile anyway? Can you see a bigger picture of what all are learning and yet do your job in a way that honors them, even in their foolishness? Without spite, without anger. I'm talking to somebody who needs to hear this. In relationships that don't work, and sometimes you feel are endless and you're stuck there. I will tell you, what changes that 
is when you start to see the God in the other one, if you can. And you start relaxing and you act differently, they will too. Because there is a benevolence in the system that asks for and will create harmony if you take the first step. This is new. In a lighter earth, one that has more potential, more energetic light than any other time, you're going to see more benevolence. You're going to see systems that work better if you will allow it and steward your soul. Because what you do from now on sticks in a way that never has before. The alliance you have with Gaia is closer than ever before. Believe me, you're going to pick up what you reap the next time around and the next time. And you'll know it. And that is why, dear one, the entire, the entire persona of human nature, the attributes that you think are human nature, are going to begin to shift. It's going to happen worldwide. It doesn't matter if you're spiritual or not. Wisdom is wisdom. Light and dark are the same for all. And when you arrive in a brighter, lighter earth and take on more wisdom, even if you're not spiritual, some things will start occurring to you that are very mature. Some are already seeing it in the children in a very minor way. They are different because they sense a feeling of knowing what works and doesn't. We have talked about this before. So stand by because you will someday be one of those children who will then fight the society in your wisdom and your ways. But you won't be alone. Because more and more old souls will have this. The feeling that there is more. That you're responsible for something grander than yourself. The whole planet and you will start stewarding your soul. This is the message of the day. It's a beautiful one. You see, there is a system. And the system is one that loves you. The human that you are is blind on purpose to the things around you which are grander than you. That is also part of the system. So that you will have real free choice not a choice that is battered by karma but a choice to move in the direction that you feel is correct based upon the wisdom you have as you walk on the planet and that my friends is gonna make a big difference some of you are already starting to feel these shifts and these changes as as I leave, I say, I want you to know that you are eternal. The death has no sting. You're always going to be back. You wouldn't miss the party. But this time, the party will be grander. Because you'll remember what to do and what not to do. And so it is.